So should we buy or sell the Norwegian stock market ETF? First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by liking and commenting. So here is Norway. It's in Northern Europe. Uh, yeah, 19.6 ish percent from the 52 week low, but still 22% away from the highs. So we start here with the chart. Uh, this is in a long term weekly data points. Uh, you can see that this uh, ETF, this market moves in major cycles. So Norway had a bear market between 2014 and 20, late, in the early 2016, then a bull market then a new bear, then a bull. Now recently we have seen actually a bear market in uh, Norway. From here to here, we're talking about you know 35% uh, pullback, which is definitively rather uh, substantial. Ever since this one went public, the red 200 week moving average has been a big deal. Resistance here, solid resistance and major sell off. We get above it, big rally. We fall below it, becomes resistance, big sell-off, get above it, big rally. Uh, in this case, we are rather furiously uh, fighting that resistance level. So let me just get the yellow color because there's a major battleground now at the red 200 week moving average. Uh, I do think that this leans bullish because uh, the bears are not able to trigger a sell-off. So when you are below a resistance level, the expectation is bearish success. If the bears are not able to sort of push it in the expected direction and you see the bulls test and test and test the underline of that resistance level, that is a sign of strength from the bulls and definitely a cause of concern for the bears. So there's, there's not been success yet here for the bulls, but uh, there's been quite a few times now where we test the res resistance. Uh, and the bears do not respond by triggering a major sell-off. So that's, um, that's dangerous for the bears. On the topic of red 200 uh, point moving average, this is the 200 day moving average. Resistance, big sell-off. Resistance, uh, and a little bit of a sell-off. But we go back here to the blue 100 day moving average. And um, you see here on Friday, we almost tested the red 200 day again. So while the bears are definitively active, uh, the bulls are also very active. And the bears are not able to get like a big score after um, these uh, resistance uh, levels are tested. Um, if we look here at the RSI, we are really coiled here, uh, which really reflects uh, the pressure from uh, the bulls. Uh, if we go here to the daily data points, you see here that accumulation distribution is very strong. There's a massive bullish divergence between price and accumulation. So there are definitively people building positions here. This is a very substantial bullish uh, divergence. Um, you see, this is interesting. This back here, March 2022, was also a time where you had a strong bullish divergence between, so price was not doing anything spectacular here, but accumulation distribution was. And right after that, you had a very sharp rally. Um, so this is definitively very interesting from a more bullish perspective. So in this case, 200 DMA, hello, say VMA and DMA resistance. But I put a bit of a question mark here because uh, it's being tested a lot. So I will give the bears here minus, oops, minus three. Okay, let's reverse that. Minus three. Uh, so yes, it is. This is a bearish. A technical setup still, but the issue here is that the bulls are just a bit too active. Um, uh, so it go I would, in in any other case, if we had like a one time or a couple time testing of a resistance level, I might give it like a min eight, minus eight in favor of the bears. But for every time, you see the bulls 
test and test and test a resistance level, then it will uh, deteriorate the strength uh, that the bearers have on the technical side. And uh, in this case, it is down to minus three. Next, we will look at seasonality. Uh, in this case, to the left, uh, the seasonality is pretty strong into 18-ish um, of April. Uh, to the right, uh, you see that, uh, so we are now in the early uh, part of March. So February is a very strong month for Norway, but in 2023, it was a bit of a weak month, minus 0 0.6, not, nothing dramatic, but uh, it means that we didn't get that expected strength of February. Uh, March, uh, it's overall a bit of a weak month, but since 2021, you can see that it's been bullish, rather bullish, 2021 and 2022, pretty bullish. So there's a bit of an expectation of a potential strength there in April. April, as, as you can see, um, it is the strongest month. When you look at the sum, it is uh, second in line. Only November has a bigger uh, score in the sum. But if you look at the the number of months where that are green, uh, definitively April is super strong. Uh, so yeah, definitively very, very, very much uh, on the bullish end of the spectrum. Uh, we are still in the early part of, of March, but due to the weakness of February, it could be that we will get the typical strength of February now in March, and April is very strong. So uh, there is a decent probability now that there's been a shift in the seasonality. Uh, and given that the strongest month is right, well, it's approaching, uh, I think that this is overall pretty bullish. So I do think I will give the bulls, um, I will give them a six here on uh, seasonality. Let's look at fundamentals. A year to date, 0.24% uh, for Norway and 4% for America. So America is definitively outperforming Norway. Um, 1.18 is the beta for Norway, 0 0.99 for America. So there is less volatility in America. 39 is the PE in Norway versus 21.7. So definitively way higher PE. 1.76% yield versus 1.22%. The slightly better yield. So the holdings, so 71 holdings here for Norway, 505 for America. Sector breakdown, energy minerals, finance, consumer non-durables, big in Norway and uh, in America, you see a lot of tech. Here's the market cap uh, breakdown. So the people who do look at fundamentals are not going to be that attracted to uh, uh, the Norwegian stock market ETF. So I do give the bears a minus four here. The point of looking at technical seasonality, fundamentals and relative performance is to sort of get a bit of a measurement about how different actors in the market are, will behave vis-a-vis, -vis, in this case, the Norwegian stock market uh, ETF. So you could, of course, be a person that leans on technicals and seasonality. But it's very nice to also be aware that, okay, maybe there is something here about the fundamentals that could have a bit of an effect on, uh, on uh, how people uh, invest uh, in this ETF. And uh, the more you know, uh, the better. So yeah, here is uh, relative performance. We are comparing uh, against first the S&P 500, which uh, reflects America. 95% positive correlation, 89% with VGK, which is the European stock market ETF, and 24% positive with the 10-year yield, American 10-year yield. Daily data points, 86% with S&P 500, 49% with VGK, and minus 75% with the 10-year yield. So the strongest correlation, interestingly, is not with the European stock market ETF, it is with the S&P 500. So what happens with the S&P 500 is very likely going to affect the Norwegian stock market ETF.
The SMP is in a bit of a messy situation. We have this cluster of moving averages. Some are support, some are resistance. We have horizontal resist, resist, yeah, resistance levels. Uh, yeah, the most interesting thing here, uh, it's on the daily data points. Uh, you can see that this purple 20 day moving average, it's pretty, pretty much a big uh, deal. But there's always a but because it can also be a bit of a big deal resistance level. We are currently below it. Um, but we are not like close to being overbought uh, as we are approaching it. So if, if RSI was approaching 70, then I would be a lot more spooked about a pullback, you know, at that resistance level. But in this case, yeah, I mean, the bulls have a, have an opportunity. I mean, there's no reason for the bulls to be like panicky yet. Uh, the seasonality to the left is pretty bullish. To the right, uh, March is a green month. Um, relatively green. April is very, very strong. And May is also pretty strong. So the, the, the seasonality on the horizon is really, really... It is encouraging for people who want to invest in the stock market. And in this case, specifically the S&P 500 which in turn uh, is bullish for Norway due to the positive correlation. So let's compare Norway with uh, the SPY. This is a pretty interesting pattern because, uh, let me draw it in. This is clearly a period of underperformance. So Norway is weaker uh, than America. So it would make more sense to be in the American stock market than the Norwegian. But this is different, very, very, very different. We did have a consolidation period over here, though, that did fail. So just because we have consolidation doesn't mean that the bulls will be able to flip it. Currently, this looks as a potential bullish opportunity. Uh, it could mean that long term Norway is going to outperform the American stock market. Uh, let's go here to the daily data points. We are not at any kind of risk levels yet vis a vis RSI. There seems to be a time cycles here, but I'm not sure how reliable they are. They do change. But there, are, there are time cycles though, but uh, the duration shifts a bit. Let's look at the seasonality. Yeah, it's a bit messy here to the left. Uh, March and the current month usually is actually pretty weak for Norway. So it, Norway usually underperform the S&P 500. But April is a period where Norway tends to outperform. If you look at the sum, uh, the S&P 500. But there's a big, big but because you do see that 2015 and 2016 were very strong for Norway. So those big numbers are going to have a bit of a, um, they will distort the averages. Um, so this one is a bit tricky. I, I do think that what we saw uh, when we compared uh, Norway with the S&P 500, that consolidation pattern, I will give the bulls a five. That one, that one was very interesting. That's a long-term pattern, it, it failed you know, in the previous uh, uh, scenario. Um, so it's something to, uh, to sort of be a bit cautiously optimistic about. Uh, you could, however, make a pretty strong case for Norway. Uh, Norway, it has a very uh, sizable uh, coast, which means that there's a lot of uh, oil and gas opportunities and other energy opportunities in Norway. And due to the conflict with uh, the big bear, um, there's a lot of pressure for Norway to uh, really ramp up uh, the production of energy um, resources. Uh, there's been a bit of a shift in Norway uh, to push it in a more greener direction, but I think that the priorities have shifted due to the bear. And that, of course, could be bullish for, for Norway. So yeah, all in all, I do think there's a pretty interesting setup here for the Norwegian stock market EDF. We are paradoxically at resistance, even though overall the score here is bullish, a one in favor of the bulls. 
uh, if we were to see a breakout above these uh, moving average resistance levels, then obviously this minus 3 would flip to a pretty strong bullish number instead. So yeah, I do think uh, that this is definitely uh, relatively bullish, but uh, cautiously optimistic uh, bullishness here.